Hey there, I'm Bill Boudreau and welcome to Genesis Models. What we're going to be reviewing today is Tamiya's P38 Lightning in the F&G configuration. Now this is a 2019 new tool release, but in a short time Tamiya is also going to be releasing this very same kit in an H model configuration. So uh, I chose this kit because in browsing our forums, I noticed a number of members have acquired this kit. Also, too, uh, another member actually just started a, uh, recently started a build thread on it. So I thought maybe we'd take a look and see what they're up against. So let's get to it. Taking a quick look at the box here, we've got some nice box art going on up front. On the side here, we have the 39th Fighter Squadron as well as the 339th Fighter Squadron depictions going on. Again, we're talking about Tamiya kit number 120. And over here, we have some really nice detail going on with that cockpit and the canopy glass. All right, jumping right into the box. First thing we're going to start off with here is they have a nice poster of the squadron configurations that you can build. Here's the the 339th configuration, all the markings and the paint scheme. And I really wish that they had this as a, a rolled up piece of paper because really this is like frameable material. On the other side, we have the 39th Fighter Squadron markings, paint scheme as well with the nice uh, uh, jaws tooth going on there. So a really good start to the paperwork. You got a little background information sheet as well as some tech tips going on. And then let's jump into the instruction booklet here. Paints required out front, recommended tools. Coming in here, first thing to pay attention to is this usable on code information. Um, obviously for the two different configurations that you can do for the 339th and the 39th fighter squadron. So pay attention to those throughout the course of this entire manual as there are gonna be some configuration differences between the two. And it starts right here with the instrument panel because for those two squadrons, the instrument panels were slightly different. Okay, so we have a decal going on for all of the analog gauges there as well. Coming over to the cockpit tub assembly, and I like it how Tamiya usually puts sidewalls to their different tubs, whether you're talking about the cockpit tub or the main or nose landing gear bays because that provides for a lot more detail and texture inside those wells. Finishing up the cockpit tub over here, going into the upper fuselage point. Uh, we've got an option here for a stowed or an exposed boarding ladder. And then here we start with this main wing support and the nose landing gear bay. Finishing up that nose landing gear bay assembly here, getting that mounted into the lower fuselage half. And then you have the upper and lower fuselage halves coming together with a little bit of nose weight going on there as well in the form of a ball. Going over to the nose, we have some cannon detail going on here. A little bit of uh, decals going on to some of those cannons. And then with that nose going on to the fuselage section with some additional panels and then they get you moving over to uh, some covers for those leading edges. Over here we have another example of the usable on code configurations. One squadron having some identification lights and another not. Now some of these small bits are some clear parts too so maybe a decision point as to whether or not you're going to use Tamiya's plastic uh, clear parts or some PVA glue. Jumping over here, we have some wing bits going on, and then we start with the turbochargers as well. Again, usable on-code information here. The turbochargers were slightly different with the two different squadrons, uh, so some different details and different bits going on there as well. Intake covers for the turbochargers, and then that, those assemblies going on to the engine nacelles. Then you start with the right boom assembly here, and it all starts with the landing gears. A lot of different bits to put together that are gonna go into those landing gear wheel wells. Um, a lot of detail you could probably expect having not only detail on the main side walls as well as the, the, uh, the roof, so to speak, of that wheel well, but a lot of internal bits going on in there as well. 
Again, landing gear bays, jumping over to some more parts of the engine nacelles with oil cooler filters, or heat exchangers rather, and then a little nose weight going on into the the front at, uh, portion of the boom assembly, and then those halves going together, getting some of these um, engine nacelle covers going on, as well as the radiator section, and then that completes the boom. Same set of instructions moving over to the left boom assembly all the way through. Of course, boom assembly is going on to the fuselage, and then they shift you over to the empennage section with the rudders, the mast assembly, so on and so forth. Jumping over to the landing gears. Again, usable on-code information for some of the, the tires that go on here, specifically for the hubs. Um, those are the main differences between, between those uh, squadron configurations. Getting over to the pylons right here, as well as the nose landing gear door. Again, more landing gear door information. And then you're jumping over to the external drop tanks as well. Getting those onto the fuselage, the storage ladder, as well as some additional external bits going on. Coming over here, we have the radio stack that's going on to the aft side of the cockpit tub. So really, hopefully, some be some hopefully will be some really good detail going on right there. Jumping into the seats. Now it's looking like for the seat belts, you're talking about a decal. Yeah, maybe an opportunity to kind of spruce that up a little bit with, with some scratch building or photo etch or something like that. We got Dick Bong going into the cockpit here. We've got uh, some more usable on-code information for the canopy glass all the way through. We've got our gun sight going in as well. And over here you have different configurations. Obviously, depending on your squadron too, you know, are you going to have open an open canopy glass here? Or are you going to do it in, closed, in a closed manner? We've got the props going on, nose, uh, the, the nose to the props going on there as well. And then, of course, those assemblies going on to the fuselage. And that pretty much takes care of the instruction booklet. Now, real quick discussion regarding the plastic. Everything, as you can see in here, and there is a lot of plastic to go through, so I'll try to pick up the pace here. Everything is bagged separately, so really good touch from Tamiya. And let's start it off with the clear parts. Now, I cut this bag on this side only just to be able to point out that each one of these bags are stapled. And so what you want to do is you want to make sure that when you're opening that bag, if on the stapled end, don't let those staples scratch your plastic. Looking real quickly here at the clear parts, very, very clear and well detailed all the way through. And I'm liking the pronounced panel lines, both on the inside and the outside of the glass. Really clear. I don't see any blemishes whatsoever. Typical Tamiya quality that you have right here with the clear parts. Coming over here, we have the main fuselage or the upper fuselage section. Let's take a look at some panel line detail. Looking really good all the way through. Nice, crisp, clean, consistent all the way throughout all of the panel lines. And what's really impressive too here is, hopefully I can get that honed in on the plastic, is a lot of good riveting detail. Let me try to get some focus on that on the camera. A lot of good rivet detail, very fine riveting detail. Recessed rivets, of course, on some access panels as well as on the side of these engine nacelles. A little bit of raised hardware detail going on in this aft part of the cockpit. Coming over to the next screw, we've got the bottom fuselage, as well as we're starting off with the cockpit tub. So looking at this bottom fuselage part, same exceptional detail with panel lines, as well as some really fine, and that's a good, that's a good depiction right there, really fine riveting work going on. Again, all recessed rivets all the way through throughout this entire part. Got a nice 
uh, pilot going on here. And then of course we've got the cockpit tub sidewalls going on here. Really love the detail with like the throttle quadrant right here, as well as some of these switch boxes that are going on, on the side walls. Coming over here, we've got that nice radio stack that's going on. Really good detail going on through there. A lot of other bits going on. Here we got the instrument panels, really nicely detailed. Again, a lot of nice circles going on there, but very plain, mainly because of that decal that's going on to show the, the, the instruments as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next screw. Here we've got the boom assemblies. Nice detail going on with these boom assemblies. Again, good crisp panel line details. You can catch one of these access panels as well. A lot of good riveting detail going on right there. Nice detail with these vertical stabilizers. All four of these halves are decked out very, very nicely. Coming over here, we've got the landing gears coming in really closely. You know, I really like the detail. And it's not like on the actual aircraft, these landing gears are, you know, all too impressive with their details and whatnot. They're very simplistic in their design. Um, so of course, very simplistic on these small pieces as well, but a little bit of good detail right here. And what I don't see is uh, some ejector pin marks as well as some mold seams going on that you typically see from some other manufacturers. Now we do have, I think right, right there, we do have a an ejector pin mark, but nothing really too concerning that you can't dress out. Same with up here too, so not that big of a deal. Should be able to get those weathered pretty nicely. Got the nose going on here. Let's see if we can get some of that panel line detail in one of those lights there. Got a little shadowing going on. Some nice panel line details with this nose piece. Really good detail there. Coming through to some of the turbocharger parts here. Here is the top side of what you're going to see for these turbochargers right here and here. Got some covers going on to there here. That's the bottom side of the turbocharger compartment. But you can see the detail going on here with the inlets as well. So pretty cool so far and I'm really liking this kit. Coming over to this plastic sprue, we have some additional wing parts going on here. Again, nice panel line detail with some crisp, clean, riveting work. Look at some of these other little small covers too. Let's see if I can get some focus on those. Really nice detail with panel lines as well as very fine rivets going on there all the way through. These are actually the pylons. We've got the uh, nose covers going on here. And again, usable on code information for these identification lights versus the configuration without them. Over here, we've got the horizontal stabilizer in the elevator. What I'm really liking is look at this hinge detail for the trim tap. Very nice and clean and crisp all the way through. Nice panel line work as well both sides of this assembly, especially on the bottom side here where you have various access panels and very fine riveting detail going on with those. Props. Props are very simplistic with their detail. Um, nothing really too much to be had with those. What I really like though is they have good pitch distribution on every single one of these propellers, you know, specifically the twist that's going on with them. Looks really to scale. We've got the control yoke there, nice detail going on right here, as well as on the other side. Some other external bits too, boarding ladder, some other cockpit parts. We've got the seat going on right here. Very plain, nothing too spectacular. That's kind of the way it was in the actual aircraft, but you can really sprue that up with uh, 
some photo etch or uh, some scratch building. Now this part right here, this is actually one of the switch boxes that goes with the cockpit. And let me get really close on that. Look at those really fine switches that are on this particular piece. Really good addition to what will already be a decked out and well textured canopy and instrument panel. So really cool feature there as well as on this particular cannon right here. Nice little detail going on right there. And these are the other three that actually have the decals going on them. A couple other little parts here too that came with it. Not sure what those are for, but we'll call them good. Let's get to the next sprue. Now this sprue, the two sprues in the same bag and these appear to be identical as well. Um, so wheels, external tanks, rudders, um, as well as some additional nacelle covers. Let's actually just take a look at one here. And let's start with these wheels. Again, usable on code, different wheel hubs, just a flat face. I really like this one here. Let's take a look at that detail. And I'm loving the tire treads. I mean, <laughs> you know, they're just tires, right? But these treads really make these tires stand out and look really, really good. Coming over here, we've got one of the rudders. Nice panel line work going on there, um, as well as some riveting and hinge detail too. Let's take a quick look at the other side, all the way around. Coming over here, we have the external fuel tanks. Um, nothing too much for the smaller ones. And again, keep in mind, external fuel tanks, like we saw in the instructions, they have the usable on code information. Coming over here to the larger fuel tanks, you kind of notice here that there's this is actually raised panel line detail, not so much um, recessed panel line. So certainly true to scale to these tanks that were uh, made back in World War II. Coming over here, we've got some radiator covers, some minor panel line detail going on there. Whoops, sorry, bumped the camera. Um, and some rivet detail as well. Small bits going on. Here's the... Uh, one of the nacelle covers as well. Really have a good opportunity to get all of these pieces weathered extremely, extremely well. And one thing too is um, on this bottom side of this engine nacelle, we've got this access door. And it looks to be some really good hinge detail going on right there too. All right, those were both two sprues. They're pretty much identical. And now that brings us to the last piece of plastic here. All right, we've got uh, a lot of uh, main landing gear and nose landing gear bays. Let's start it off this way. Here we've got the, the nose landing gear bay with that strut. Um, this is actually the inside of, of that nose landing gear bay. So really good texture going on there. Um, and that brings us to these sidewall pieces right here. And look at that, I mean, nice panel line detail. Um, one thing to note is these are not ejector pins, uh, so don't mistake them. I'm not sure if I can get that on camera, but there is a little bit of, of recessed rivet detail going on with those two marks. So again, just kind of take a really close look at these parts and see, uh, make sure that you're not sanding away something that's actually part of the detail of it and here's another example too with like these main landing gear doors you know a lot of circles going on there don't obviously unmistakable don't think of uh scraping that stuff away or sanding in a way that's actually part of the detail going on with these pieces even though they may look like ejector pin marks a lot of small bits going on to the different uh wheel wells the side walls um, or the bulkheads, so to speak, for those wheel wells, more small bits. Nose tire, same thing, usable on code information for the two different types of hubs. Here are our main landing gear ceilings as well. So good structural detail going on right there. And of course, the provisions for those weights going right there, coming over here. Now these side walls for these main landing gears 
Now you can see, of course, the, the detail going on there, but what I want to really point out is that, see if I can get this focused in, all of this hardware detail, these rivets, these are actually raised rivets, not recessed. Let's see if I can really get in close there. You can see that. Very uniform throughout all of their spacing. Very, very nice touch. Should be an amazing wheel well that you can weather and uh, touch up there. And that is the last sprue. Of course, I've got some balls here, so let's really get in and take a look at the detail of these things. No, I mean, they're just balls, right? So good touch that they added the nose weight in there. So let's talk the one negative to this kit. It's kind of price tag. I mean, it's like 60 bucks, right? I mean, you're talking 45 to 50 quid. But you get what you pay for, right? I mean, Tamiya, they really put some balls in this kit. I mean, literally speaking, I mean, you saw the really nice fitting nose and boom weights that, that go right in their proper locations. I mean, you've got tremendous detail on it every part throughout this kit, even down to the smallest that go on the on this aircraft. Gorgeous clear plastic parts too, with the added bonus of being able to configure that canopy open closed and the different uh, configurations of it, depending on which squadron you're building. Uh, you know, speaking of configuration, you also have those usable on codes too, and that gives you many other options for you to choose and work with, so on and so forth. So. Uh, I know this is an odd looking aircraft, you know, but whether you, whether you choose to build this in a pristine condition of an air, one of these aircraft that's flying today, or whether you really get down to whether every bit of detail that's evident throughout this kit, it's sure to look spectacular in the end. Now, I think the current build thread is from Ray Ray 39. So jump in Genesis Models' forums, get in that thread, cheer them on, cheer the others on too that have yet to start this kit. And until the next time, I'm Bill Goudreau, this is Genesis Models, and I hope you've enjoyed.